Sometimes people ask me, Dieter, how long does it take uh, to define my meaning? Must be very difficult. And I always tell them, five to 10 minutes. And they say, what? Are you kidding? <laughs> we are made believe very often that the purpose must be something big, something earth shattering. And I do not agree with this at all anymore. <laughs> the really sad thing is that young people, mm -hmm. uh, when you talk to them, uh, younger than 30, they're saying, yes, the, the, the make peace and all this stuff. Then they get married or they have kids. And all of a sudden, most of them, become very pragmatic until something really goes wrong. And then people are coming and saying, this can't be everything to life. There are always people who come and say to me, Dieter, I don't find anyone who loves me. And then I'm always asking them, do you love yourself? And in 99% of the cases, the answer is silence, not even no, silence. <laughs>
besides to make money, besides to uh, make career, get recognition, and maybe raise children? Why are you really, 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 you know, like the Spice Girls? Why are you really, really, really here on this planet? So this was the point of time when I decided that's it. So ever since, I'm not doing anything else uh, than following Viktor Frankl's footsteps in a way, helping people to find the purpose and how to live it. How 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 was it like? How, how was he uh, as like as a person? I mean, and how, how did he? I mean, if you reflect back, how did he uh, able to you know influence you to to go to his foot, footsteps as well? Uh, to, to the outside, he was extremely dynamic, outspoken, straight to the point, and deep and profound. Uh, when you were talking with him in a, in a smaller circle, he he was uh, sometimes, well, quite a few times actually, more philosophical and even spiritually, you might say. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, with what he has experienced in the concentration camp and the way how he survived, his personality was really strong sometimes, even a little bit uh, too strong, so to speak. Uh, but it, it was really this absolute belief and you as a human being, you're more than you think you are, and you can, and you not only can, but you maybe have to find a meaning in your life uh, if you really want to live a life you love. And uh, I mean, he, he found his meaning in, uh, in his life in, uh, in the concentration camp, which is a definitely unusual place. And actually, what few people know, he, he had two meanings. And uh, one meaning was, well, one purpose was to find to see his wife again. He didn't know until he came back after the uh, concentration camp that she has uh, been killed. Uh, but this kept him alive. And the other thing was uh, to tell people in the future uh, not to do the same mistakes as the German were, Germans were doing. He was always dreaming, imagining himself to be in a warm university lecture hall. Uh, and giving a, a lecture to students and saying, don't do this, don't do this, rather do this and this. And especially, for instance, to imagine himself to be in a warm lecture hall kept him also alive physically because it was bloody cold in the concentration camp. So uh, yeah. fascinating personality. And and if if I may do some advertising for him, so to speak, uh, there are two yeah. things. One is, and uh, You have read the book as well, uh, Man's Search for Meaning. And just to yeah. give one example about the book uh, in, in Washington, D.C., in, in the Library of the Congress, they have a list of the 100 most influential books for American history. Number one is the Bible, which is not a surprise for the United States. But his book, Man's Search for Meaning, is number seven out of 100 books. Very thin and very profound, as you know. And the other thing is, if uh, anyone of the listeners or you yourself already ever come to Vienna, I strongly recommend to go to the Victor Franklin Museum, which is his former practice, actually. It's very small. It's nothing like a classical museum. It's very interactive. It's absolutely, actually, it's, it's in German and in English. So uh, everyone oh. can really uh, do it. So strongly recommend it. Well, um, and uh, what did you um, learn the most from him? Maybe things that you learned that uh, from your experience uh, with him, from your interaction with him, that that wasn't in any of his books. Hmm, that's a good question. That wasn't in any of his books or in, in the way he was saying. Well, as I was mentioning before, uh, he, in, in a smaller circle, he also was rather philosophical, almost spiritual. And uh, some, there was something which he probably, without intending, it, supported in my development and I only became aware of it afterwards. Let me explain what I mean. Hmm. My philosophy nowadays is that in, in, in my life, at least, there are three phases of development. Uh, the first phase are called having, the second phase are called doing, and the third phase are called being. Having, doing, being. Having means people believe if I have stuff or relationships for this matter, then I will hmm. be happy. Fewer people come to the third, uh, to the second phase, which is doing, doing something hopefully meaningful. And that's Viktor Frankl. If I do something hopefully meaningful, then I will be happy. And okay. even fewer people come to the third phase, with it, which is simply being in the now. And being in the now for me means three things. First, not to be driven by woundings from the past. 
Second, not to be driven by the need to fulfill expectations of other people in the present. And third, not to be driven by fears about the future. Nothing about the past, nothing about uh, the present, no fears about the future. I have a client in India, when I told him this uh, for the first time, he said, Dieter, it helps to believe in reincarnation, because in this lifetime, we will never get there. <laughs> and I agree <laughs> that the journey is the goal. But to come back yeah. to your question, so uh, my parents, especially my mother, was always very spiritual. So I think I was on the journey already from having to being. And I'm still on this journey, obviously. Uh, and I was missing the steps, stepping stone. Uh, and this was Viktor Frankl with, with the, uh, the purpose. But at the same time, he also was saying their purpose is what is missing for most people, but it's not the last thing. The last thing then is really to come to a, a spiritual realm, to come to a... Uh, uh, he didn't say religious. Uh, I mean, he, he was. It was quite interesting to, to mention it as well. He was Jewish, and his wife Ellie, who is still alive, by the way, 95, 96 years old. Uh, she's uh, a, Christ, a Christian, so it's it's also uh, he was open to this. But he was saying it's a it should be a, a spiritual journey. Purpose is an extremely important stepping stone. Mm. And at that time. Um... Can you share like your decision making process? Like, okay, um, you you, you uh, listen to him, you learn from him, mm -hmm. and it influences you in a certain way. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think at that at that time, that's not what you're doing. Like, what that's not what you're working on. That's not what you do as a career. But then you made the decision somewhere that this is what I want to be focusing on. Mm -hmm. From now on, he said. So um, uh, I'm I'm not sure if you can call it a real decision. I think it was more going with, with the flow. Uh, I mean, I started my career as I was saying as a as a coach, and I was mainly working in companies and and for companies. Okay, and there was all about goal setting, and I already had the feeling and I emphasized the feeling. Uh, uh, okay, the goals is okay, but the, the majority majority of the goals were material goals and uh and then people achieved the goal and then they said okay what's the next goal it always has to be bigger you know like climbing the next higher mountain and i always had the feeling this this doesn't fit and then in a way it was frankly then who was saying okay so why do you want to climb the mountain at the first place uh what what is the what for the why behind it in non-material terms in non-material terms so and then i started to when i had the especially uh, uh either one-to-one -one sessions with uh, uh, managers or so, uh, or even keynotes with companies, I started to add a little bit this about the why, the question why. And uh, then I don't remember from whom I learned this, but I, I learned, I, I started to use a question, for instance, when I was giving a keynote in a company, uh, which was about a management topic uh, normally. And, and the question was asking the people at the beginning, do you want to live the next 10 years like the last two years, yes or no? If yes, go home. If no, maybe we have to talk something about it. And the reaction was unbelievable. I mean, in this 40 years, for sure, there have been some people leaving, no question about this. But 99% never left. But And you could see, as a speaker like me, in the audience, people were folding their arms and, and um, saying no. And some, there were even some people saying not even two years in this company. And so this all were indicators for me to shift a little bit uh, away from purely uh, profit oriented, purely material stuff, uh, even moving away from goals and achieving goals to the question why. So long story short, it was a process, so to speak. It was not necessarily a decision oh. I was taking, okay, from tomorrow on, I'll do it differently. It was an evolution, a process. And, and nowadays, uh, the I'm even more and more into the third area, into the spiritual area, uh, mm. helping people who say, "Okay, what 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 is this uh, spirituality at all?" So it's it, it's an ongoing process. That was a short answer to your long question. Oh no no no! It's a, um, I, I have more questions to ask, and, and but this is so fascinating, sure. and it's a very powerful question as well. Like, uh, I'm just picturing you like in in this room full of people and opening with that kind of question yeah wow without, um, without presenting myself you know without getting mm -hmm. introduced four five hundred whatever uh people and uh, all you know uh, 
like in, in German speaking Europe, a, a, a banker style with three piece suit, and then you you start this. Next two hours is about the question: Do you want to live the next ten years like this? And boom. Wow. It's sad in a way. It's sad in a way, but I also have the feeling over these forty plus years, there's a change going on. Uh, not very fast, and and uh, but more. I mean. I'm always saying if you're talking with people one to one, and especially if you do it the Austrian way, which is uh, with a glass of something <laughs> uh, yeah. or two glasses of something, then as it's saying in Latin, in vino veritas, in 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 the wine you have the truth. People are opening up. Uh, then they're saying, well, yeah, it's it's not exactly what I always thought as a young uh, person uh, the, how my life is developing, but I can't do anything. Uh, or they don't know what to do about it. And this is exactly the challenge. We never learn about this inner world uh, or about the purpose even in, in, in school. We learn facts and figures. Uh, Paris is the capital of France and two plus two is four, but we never learn about the inner stuff, our fears, our blocks, our why. So this is where there is a, a, tent, a trend nowadays to say, okay, maybe I should or we should go a, a little bit into this area as well. Why do you think it's important, let's say, uh, for people to uh, to find meaning and to, to find purpose in, in their life? I mean, let's say if there are people who are like, hey, my life is fine right now. I'm, I don't know what my life is for, but I'm okay. Uh, why, why should I, you know, bother oh, to do all of that, that, for example? That's perfectly fine. I'm always saying, because people ask it very often, oh. we even ask it in the old days, when I still was f uh, focusing on goals, do I really need a goal? Do I really need a purpose or, or meaning or, or or what is it? And I would say, no, they don't need. But then you must, must never complain about how your life is developing. It's perfectly fine not to have a meaning, not to have a purpose, not to have goals, provided, by the way, you don't harm anyone else. That's another mm -hmm. uh, condition. But you never must complain then uh, about the development of your life. If there's something to complain, you maybe have to go a little bit inside yourself. And that's something we never learned, as I was just was saying. Go inside yourself and say, okay, what is it which makes me unbalanced or even unhappy sometimes? And what is really important for me in my life? And then it more or less automatically comes to the question, why am I or what for am I really here on this planet? Hmm. And what is the answer to that? Like, I mean, from your perspective, from your experience, can it can the answer be different from one person to another, or it's the same for everyone? You mean you mean the meaning, the purpose? Yeah, like what what am I here for? That that question. Oh, the, oh. the answer is is completely different for everyone. I mean, hmm. you can't uh, uh, go to this question from two perspectives. One is from the more universal perspective, and one is from the individual perspective. Uh, and from the universal perspective, why does the universe exist? What for does the universe? There, maybe you come to a uh, an, an answer which has different words, but at the end of the day, it's it's the same thing. Uh, oh. uh, in an individual perspective, everyone has his or her different answers, and that's perfectly fine. And by the way, that's a good point you're bringing up because nowadays, as I was saying just before, more and more people are not only asking about the question for the individual purpose, but also what is life for? What is the universe uh, for? Hmm. If, if you want, to, Rana, I, can, I can give an example about this. If yeah, you want, please, later. Please, please, please. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, well, the example I'm always giving is imagine the ocean and imagine ocean. two waves. Yeah, the ocean coming to, and two waves coming closer to the beach and one wave shot into the other wave. My goodness, we're going to crash. Uh, we're going to die. Uh, and the other wave responding, you're stupid. You're part of the ocean. You cannot die. We are all waves, but at the same part, we are part of the ocean, but we completely forgot it. So the wave is saying, okay, what is my individual uh, purpose? But more and more people are coming into this you might call it spiritual realm and saying, okay, what is the whole, what is the oceanic? And then you can have whatever label, oceanic or, or divine or, or love or consciousness. They're all or Taoism, they're all labels. But this is the difference. Uh, so coming back to your question, individually, oh. everyone has a different purpose. But, but at the same time, like, you know, th this reminds me of, um, I'm sure you know this saying: everything happens for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. But then, but then, 
when I read that statement, that sentence, I also thought, hey, it, okay, everything happens for a reason, and I am part of everything. Exactly. So, so it means I happen for a reason, right? Uh, yeah, well, then, okay. This, this is this is arguing from a, a wave perspective. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we think there must be a reason, but maybe from the universe perspective, uh -huh. <laughs> it would be laughing and saying, "Well, <laughs> you stupid little wave." The, 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 we, the universe, we don't have a, a why. It could be. It could be. Yeah. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm always saying in this you uh, oceanic approach or whatever you want to label it yeah, yeah. Uh, there will be so many things we even cannot imagine mm. we even can't imagine so and and of course because of our limited capacity as a human being we are uh, using our own measurements well if if i uh, like the logic logic is the best example we're saying everything has to be logic come on the universe is not logic i mean how do you explain eternity or infinity with logical terms our brain cannot uh, uh, understand it so it's difficult to to understand yes i have to have a purpose or a meaning and by the way there's a difference for me between purpose and meaning uh, uh the universe does not have to have a meaning yes the universe is in, in infinite the universe is eternal so how <laughs> it, we cannot understand in my opinion we cannot understand it with our limited senses Hmm. And you and you mentioned earlier the difference between purpose and meaning. Can can you elaborate on that? Yeah, uh, I'm always saying we have two purposes. Uh, just to shock people and to tell them it's even more complicated than the thought. Uh, we have what I call the outer purpose, and we have the inner purpose. And to make a distinction, I'm always calling it the inner meaning, inner meaning, and outer purpose. Outer purpose is as the name says, in regard to the outside world. And this is what we usually think about when we talk about purpose. But I'm claiming that at the end of the day, we have to find first and foremost a question, what is my inner meaning? And my inner meaning, and I'll give you an example in a second. My inner meaning is usually very abstract, philosophical, maybe even spiritual, and it's absolutely only about myself. Not in an egoistic way, but in an egocentric way. Let me give an example. Uh, it, it could be, uh, well, let me give a personal example. For me, it is three or fourfold. It is to experience oneness, to find inner peace and inner harmony, and to be kind to myself. That's so the inner meaning. That's the inner meaning. Because I claim only if you have this frame of what is your inner meaning, you will be able to define your proper outer purpose. Because what happens so often is that... Uh, especially in, in our Western societies, uh, we are made believe that the outer purpose must be something big, something earth-shattering. So uh, this already makes it very difficult to find something which is really fulfilling. And then, to, because people believe I have to uh, get rid of hunger in the uh, world or I have to uh, become another Mother Teresa or wh whatever it is. Uh, but then the, the problem is that uh, subconsciously, uh -huh. subconsciously, most of the time, it is not for the thing itself in the outer purpose, it is to get what most of us miss very much since childhood, which is love. Simply love as we, uh, most all of us, almost all of us, never got it enough from our uh, parents. I give you one or two examples so, so you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Some uh, 30 years ago, I was doing a workshop in a Swiss company. It was for the board of directors, seven men, and it was a weekend workshop. And uh, in this workshop, I gave them a question to answer for themselves. And the question was, and they were all 55 and older, all members of the board of, of directors. And the question was, from what you have achieved in your life, who should see your success? And then they were writing it down on a piece of paper. Uh, and then in the coffee break and at dinner, they came to me one-to-one -to, -one to share with me their unique individual personal answer. But you know what happened? Five, five out of the seven men told me they have been writing down their father. Even so, he maybe already has been dead for many years, but they've been working 30, 40 years, 70, 80, 90 hours a week, heart attack, divorce, no time for children, only to be able to go to daddy and to say, look, daddy, what I've achieved. I'm a good boy, right? And if daddy isn't alive anymore to say, he would have been so proud if he still would have been around. Completely driven the whole life, subconsciously. But mm. this doesn't start at the age of 50 or something. This starts much earlier. 
some right. eight years ago, I was invited to a startup conference and uh, there was a, a competition. I was in the jury and the two young guys, uh, uh, 24, 25, got the pr first prize for an app for elderly people. Don't ask me technical details, no idea. Uh, anyway, so afterwards, uh, the, the one of the two stood up and said he's so happy, so proud at such a young age, do something meaningful for society to help elderly people, and yada, yada, yada. Afterwards, we had dinner together in a small circle, some glasses of wine, and then he stood up again and said, uh, uh, you know, it, now it would be really nice if a multinational company would show up and buy the whole stuff for one or two millions. But this was only the beginning. After some more glasses of wine, he said, and then hopefully, finally, my father will come and say, son, I'm so proud of you. They were doing something good for society. No question about this, but deep down, they were doing it subconsciously to get feedback, to get validation, to get love. And that's perfectly mm -hmm. okay. Don't get me wrong. I only yeah. have to be aware of it. So this is why I'm saying, long story short again, I only can define in my philosophy the outer purpose properly if I know my inner meaning, what is really important to me, not in an egoistic way, in an egocentric way. And then I can say, okay, do I really do it for other people or am I also doing it for myself, which is okay, but I have to be aware of it. Uh -huh. So this is why I distinguish between inner meaning as the starting point, creating the frame, so to speak, and uh -huh. then... Of the purpose. So if someone is asking me, Dita, what is your purpose in life? It depends if I know the person or not. Sometimes I give the, the author version saying I help people to find the purpose in life, how to live it. Or if it's a more private environment, I say, well, I would really, uh, I'm really working or developing myself to experience oneness and to find inner peace and harmony and to learn to be kind to myself. Because only then, by the way, I'd be, I'm able to be kind to other people as well, if I'm kind to myself. Mm -hmm. for myself. Wow, I have several questions. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking which one I'm going to ask first, but I think uh, just following up from what you shared about your inner meaning, and yeah. one of them is to find inner peace. Is it? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My, from my perspective, uh, to find is like it's something like. I'm here, I'm trying to find something. Uh, but if it's an inner meaning, it's something part of your inner framework and it's about finding inner peace. Uh, shouldn't it be already there? Uh, yeah, that's a very good point. It is there. It, it be is like there. Creating, creating inner peace instead of finding. But I mean, like, like I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to say this because it's not my place because it's your. Uh, yeah. I'm just thinking from my, my perspective, uh, you know. Yeah. No, no, I 100% agree. Inner peace is there. It's there. It's only that it's in the basement of our of our psyche, so to speak. It's it's locked away. Uh, and we don't, because of education, because of culture, we we, we are made believe you have to work hard. Uh, you have to, to uh, develop uh, every year in, in business, for instance, make more money, bigger, bigger, bigger. We're so much in this, in this, hamster wheel or, or uh, red race, so to speak, that we completely forgot uh, that uh, there is inner peace. I give you a personal example, if I may, because this is happening to me in the last two or three years. I had to learn, and I really had to learn, uh, to allow myself to, for instance, take not only a nap in the afternoon every then and when, but what I'm doing nowadays very often is I get up at six, seven o'clock in the morning, work for two or three hours, and go back for another nap for one or two hours in the morning. And I had okay. to learn to allow this to myself without feeling guilty. Because I was so much programmed, Dieter, this is a waste of time. Uh, you have to work hard. You have to uh, do this, do that. No, easy, slow down. The inner peace is here. It's just oh. hidden away uh, uh, below all the mud of the social pressure at the end of the day, oh. which makes the belief if you don't do anything, you're going to be a failure. You will not be successful. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. I I, I understand from from uh, your explanation. Now I I have a better understanding on, on yeah. why you choose the word fine. You know. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, for for most people, from your experience as well, why do you think a lot of people find it difficult to to find whether they're uh, inner meaning or also your, their 
outer purpose as well. That's actually very simple to explain uh -huh. because there's one th and I touched it before. Uh, let me explain a little bit more detailed because there's one thing we never learn, which is about ourselves. What fears... Okay, no, let me put it this way. People come to me and say, Dieter, can you help me to find my purpose? Yes. Okay, how do we start? And I always say, we don't start with defining a purpose. Why not? Because first we have to go into the subconscious. We have to see what fears, what blocks, what blind spots do you have? What emotional woundings from your childhood do you have? Uh, sure. So I'm not a therapist, just to be very clear, but I help people to, for instance, to give an example, to find out what were your emotional woundings in your childhood? Because let's face it, we all, and I really mean we all, experienced emotional woundings in our childhood. For instance, father was saying, why don't you know this? Why don't you know that? Your brother, your sister, your age knew this. Or mom is saying you always have to be nice to other people because otherwise they will leave you alone. Or my grandmother is dying. Or I'm in a, in a uh, war zone. Or I'm getting bullied at school. We all have experience. We all experience emotional woundings. Small, big, one time ongoing. And then we create a belief about ourselves. I mean, personal example, in my case, my brother, who was five years younger than me, has passed away already. Uh, so for the first five years of my life, I was in the center of attention of my mother, paradise. Then my brother was born five years uh, afterwards. Competition, small, noisy, and dirty. And still the attention of my mother went from me to my brother. Of course, as a five years old, I didn't understand that this is necessary. I thought, I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable enough. Mm -hmm. And then we create a belief about ourselves. And the belief is usually something around I'm not good enough. And then we still, as a child, subconsciously, we create uh -huh. a strategy to overcome this, to make sure this uh -huh. wounding doesn't happen again. And the strategy can be to be a people pleaser, uh, to be to try to be successful in business, in sports or in politics, to be bullying, to withdraw, uh, all kinds of different strategies. And we have this behavior subconsciously our whole life. Uh, and also in relationships, by the way. Uh, and this is the... The belief I'm not good enough and the fear other people are going to see it, that so many people have difficulties to ha have this creativity and inner strength to say this is what I really would like to be in my life or to do in my life this is my real purpose hmm. does it make and sense yes yes perfectly and how, how would uh, how would you facilitate someone to identify uh, those, you know, wounds, <laughs> especially when it goes back to uh, okay, to the childhood. Okay, the, uh, I give you a, a, a shocking answer, or actually for two, two things I give you a shocking answer. Uh, I start with the more shocking one first. Sometimes people ask me, Dieter, how long does it take uh, to define my meaning? Must be very difficult. And I always tell them, five to 10 minutes. And they say, what? Are you kidding? And I say, well, the implementation is a different story, but the definition is five to 10 minutes because again, deep down, we know it. Deep down, we know it. It's oh. simply that we do not listen to it because of the reasons I was giving before. And to oh. the original question about like with this uh, woundings, 45 minutes. And I'm doing this with therapists. Don't get me wrong. It's it's not that I'm uh, uh, pretending to be a clown. I, I mean, therapists sometimes tell me, uh, Seriously, uh, like, of course, they're afraid uh, I get them out of their job, but it is much easier than we are made believe. It is much easier than we are made believe. Okay, there's one condition. I have to say this as well, that people are more or less prepared to peel the onion, as I call it, to go deeper. So it, my Ooh. job, if, if a client comes, is the first, sometimes it's half an hour, I just have to create an atmosphere of trust and th that they understand that they feel it's going to be beneficial for me. It's even going to be fun in a way. I'm trying to use a lot of, of fun in there. Uh, and then it takes maximum 45 minutes. And the, and again, they say, oh, shoot, I knew it all the time, but I've never seen it so clearly, and I've not seen what I can do about it. Mm. Okay. And then, and then you ask, and then I ask them, okay, now let's see what is your real meaning. And this goes like this, very, very simple. Once they be, have 
been peeling the onion, which might be a little bit uh, with tears sometimes, uh, but also tears of uh, relaxation, so to speak, to get rid of, of the burden. And then all of a sudden to say, yeah, well, I, I always want to do this. Let me just give you one more example about this. Uh, it happens so often that women, mothers at the age, let's say 45 or, or so, uh, the kids have been leaving the house. And then very often uh, women, especially in, in cities, uh, are saying, what's next in my life? And then I help them to, to redefine their purpose because at the end, in 90%, they're saying, I always knew it. It was just interrupted for 20 years because they were a mother. Uh, mm. So it inside ourselves. Mm. Uh, 45 minutes plus 10 minutes. So one hour. Implementation is a different story. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. And what, what, what's the second answer? You said like that's the more shocking answer. The second one would be what? No, no, no. The first one was about how long does it take uh, to define uh, the meaning? So five to ten right. minutes. But how, how long does it take to become aware of your uh, problem? Uh, and 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 see what you can do about it. This takes forty five minutes. Okay, okay, uh, and and then you said like to live that is a different story because yeah. discovering and living, although they are connected, but they are two different processes as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, again, from your experience as well, what would it take? To, to be able to to live that purpose in a okay. rather consistent way and what what are the challenges that, that usually come up okay there are again two aspects to it the first one is what is the purpose itself as I was mm. saying earlier we are made believe very often that the purpose must be something big something earth shattering and I do not agree with this at all anymore. Uh, example, Mother Teresa. Oh. I mean, I'm always asking people, what was the marketing plan of Mother Teresa? And then they're saying, did you have one? No, of course not. What was the budget of Mother Teresa? Probably oh. none at the beginning. Was she planning to become world famous? At the beginning, for sure not. Was she planning to get the Peace Nobel Prize? At the beginning, for sure not. What was she doing? She was walking around in Calcutta and holding the hands of people who were literally laying on the street and about to pass away so they are not alone in the last hours. So I think meaningful, fulfilling, and for me the word is fulfilling is, is the important thing here. Fulfilling purpose is to do something small, to do something small. Uh, and... <laughs> Once or twice a year, I, I do uh, lectures at universities, and it's always the same story. Students get very excited about the topic of purpose. Yes, I will do this, I will do that, I will change the whole world, I will make the world a better place. And then I'm always interrupting them and asking them, excellent, but what is the name of your neighbor? I don't know, but they will make the world a better place. I will slow down. What is the name of your neighbor? We, have, we are so in this, it has to be big. I personally came to the conclusion, the last... 10 years or so, for me, the real outer purpose, hmm. similar to my inner meaning, which is kindness. Because if I don't have the mindset, with other words, for me, outer purpose nowadays is a mindset. It's not even a project anymore. Uh, don't get hmm. me wrong. It's okay to work for an NGO or to write a book or wh whatever it is. But if I don't have the proper mindset, kindness based on not expecting too much in return ah. this the thing, then all the projects will not work or they might work temporarily but they will not give lasting fulfillment so for me it is nowadays a mindset an attitude kindness even old lady tries to cross the street and she has heavy bags i help her i will do the best within my possibilities to help someone who needs it. But I'm not there with a, a big uh, flag and saying, I want to uh, get rid of, of starving children. If I can contribute, yes. But small, keep it small. Kindness for me. So it's um, like doing good deeds in a selfless way. As much yeah. as possible. I mean, we, we always want to get some feedback. No question about this. But yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How, how how would you advise or suggest people, especially nowadays with all the social media and everything where 
everybody was everybody is basically trying to show themselves um and i'm i'm not saying that as a bad thing because it depends we don't know what's in people's heart what's their intention um yeah. so i'm not saying that as as a negative thing but it can be negative uh, and there's this um at least for, for me um i'm also I'm, i'm i'm being honest with you like even doing what i do i'm uh, i remind myself all the time that uh, I, i'm doing this what, what i do now i i need to do this selflessly for me uh, I'm, i'm as a religious person I, i do this because this is one of my ways to to get closer to god um and beautiful beautiful and um but our ego from time to time it's going to go up and down right So sometimes that ego is like you know it's it's so, you know it's it's your important and I, not in a uh, egocentric but in an egoistic that uh, sometimes comes up right yeah uh, yeah and, okay and this is the development now this it becomes even more challenging so how how would you yeah. um, advise there's a development you? it's getting a little bit better but at the end of the day most people at least the ones who come to me come to me and this is a sad thing i have to say because something went wrong in their lives uh well, most of the time we need some some disaster in our life like uh, i don't know an accident or a divorce or getting fired or or, or whatever before at a certain age uh, i barely have uh, had or have clients uh, less than 40 years of age because i'm always saying in the first 20 years like let's say from 20 to 40 we are so much in the, in the society's grip that we have to build up something and and we uh, even with the best intentions uh, <laughs> the, the, for me by the way the, the really sad thing is that young people i mean you've been with with isaac as well uh mm-hmm. when you talk to them uh, younger than 30 they're saying yes the, the, the make peace and all this stuff then they get married or they have kids and all of a sudden most of them become very pragmatic because there's the social pressure to understandably to do the best for the ch- for the children or for the child so they get very pragmatic so uh, all of a sudden the the it's we we're adapting to the mainstream or most of us do until something really goes wrong and then people are coming and saying this can't be everything to life there must be something else to life so uh because at the end of the day at the end of the day to boil it down to one point it means that we have to learn to develop this inner strength to swim a little bit against the mainstream and be okay with it and, and the challenge and, and the challenge for this is that you were saying a moment ago something like uh, we we can't look into the heart of people hmm. i don't subscribe to this i think at the end of the day we are all looking for the same thing which is love to be hmm. love I, ideally like we hopefully have been loved by our mothers uh, which would be unconditional love but mm. the thing falling uh, every then when i know every once a year on the 14th of february at the valentine's day i'm always doing an anti valentine's day event uh, and it's always fully packed and there are always people who come and say to me dealer i don't find anyone who loves me and then i'm always asking them do you love yourself and in 99% of the cases the answer is silence not even no silence and then i'm saying how can you expect that someone is loving you if you don't even love yourself now what does it mean for uh, for, for what you just were saying we have to learn in, in my philosophy my philosophy we have to learn to give as much as love or whatever you want to call it to ourselves and to become less dependent on getting it from the outside world we we all need love at the end of the day we all need love but we try to compensate it with uh, relationships with material stuff with a car with a house with success this is why i don't like the term success yeah mm. uh, because it's material we have to learn to give it as much as possible to ourselves and again I'm not saying it's easy but it's easier than we are made believe it's just we never learned it so the the process is to to the help people to see not to only to see to on a daily basis so to speak to gi- uh, give validation recognition love whatever term you want to use for themselves as much as possible and therefore they develop inner peace 
in her calf, in her strength, and therefore they are better prepared to deal with whatever the universe is putting on our doorsteps and also to be able to say, okay, I have to swim a little bit against mainstream, but I'm fine. Hmm. And, 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 and that's the, the, the challenge uh, at, so, sometimes at least uh, I'm looking at from my own perspective, from my clients' perspectives as well, from my client experiences, I'm sorry, not perspective, clients' experiences. Uh, for them, and for me sometimes, I still find it so, sometimes challenging. Um, mm. it, again, like I said, I, I need to, to remind myself um that uh, you know yeah it's it's okay like and how would you like that it's it's okay uh but, but how can we maintain that it's okay feeling okay in the smallest possible ways again let me give me a, the personal example with kindness hmm. for instance <clears throat> Uh, I'm, uh, especially if I do something with groups, I'm always asking people, how uh, how many of you or who of you is brushing his or her teeth at least once a day? And of course, all the hands go up. And then I'm asking, how many of you are brushing his or her soul at least once a day? And very often, sometimes, uh, very often, some people even ask, what do you mean? Uh, oh. And I'm saying, as, as we're automatically, more or less, once or twice a day are brushing our teeth, we have to brush our soul. And what does it mean every day, ideally? And what does it mean? It means, for instance, for me, I sit down in the evening, and it's not meditation necessarily, it's just two minutes sitting down, either in complete silence, letting everything sink in, and this is already very difficult for most people, even one minute of silence, yeah? Uh, or and or sometimes I'm just thinking back, where have I been kind today? And then pat my shoulder mm. and create and create this feeling. Mm. Well done. I'm proud of you, Dieter. Mm. It's the smallest things. Again, we are made believe it must be something big. No, I don't subscribe to this. It's the small things. But the thing is, we have to. Take the time, not find the time, because we'll never find it. We have to take the time to reflect, to s slow down, silence, or and or just reviewing the day and saying, hmm. Because let's face it, usually during a day, we have so many difficult things. And as I'm always saying, we usually only see the holes in the cheese, and we don't see the cheese. We only see what no. went wrong. We don't see what uh, is nice. So slow down. Sit down, reflect, and see, well, not so bad, not so bad. And it's the tiny things. It's the tiny little things. And they will add up so quickly if we are only aware of it. Huh. Again, this is not what mainstream is telling us. We are told if there is an issue, plan and go from A to B and work hard. No, no, easy. <laughs> this... G goes back to meaning again. Mm -hmm. I personally believe that uh, we human being, uh, and, and I read this somewhere, like this term that I really like, human beings is we are a meaning-making machine. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we always, whether consciously or subconsciously, we always give meaning to whatever, from moment to moment, to what's been, what's happening in our, in our life. Uh, but. Is there a difference between giving meaning to a particular moment, to an event that happened, and uh, having a meaningful life? Do, do you see those as two different things, or are they connected in one way or another? Well, they're def in my opinion, definitely connected to one another. Uh, I'm not so sure. I have to think about this if, if there's... A, a, Different. I mean, if they're connected, they, they might be slightly different. But for me, for instance, you might say what's coming, bubbling up now emotionally. Uh, I have the big picture, which is, for instance, to be kind. Uh, and uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, the, the, in the moment, uh, to, be, to learn to be more aware of the moment. 
Yeah, because uh, very often we, we don't see the things where we where I could be kind, for instance. I mean, the classical examples are uh, if I want to buy a specific car and all of a sudden I see only this type of car on the streets. They always uh, have been there, but we, uh, uh, my awareness wasn't there. Or or women, when they become pregnant, all of a sudden we only see pregnant women uh, around us. It's always there. So for me, it is to develop this awareness because from a spiritual philosophical perspective i really believe that everything is a message everything is a message there are no coincidences and everything we, no. we just don't see it so the short term the, the long term might be for me being kind and then no. helping the people to find their purpose the the immediate in the moment is to be as i was saying earlier the being to be as much in the moment to be aware as much as possible uh without judging without judging no of this very moment so it's connected it's not necessarily the same to, to answer your question mm -hmm. and uh, and so how, how do you would how would you define a meaningful life from your perspective okay uh i was saying earlier that it takes five to ten minutes to answer the question of your meaning and it's, it's basically yeah, yeah. one question you have to answer and i'll give you the question because this is the answer to your question now as well uh mm -hmm. The question is the following, and there are two versions, by the way. I have to mention this as well. There's the old version and there's the new version. The old version is is known as the tombstone question, which is uh, one day when you're uh, dead, what do you want uh, that is written on your on your tombstone? Uh, like, he, uh, what have you achieved to say it has been a successful life? Mm -hmm. I don't subscribe to this. For me, the simple question to answer and also to come to your question is. One day, when you will be looking back in your life, what feelings will you have to say, yes, it has been a fulfilled life? What feelings will you have to say, yes, it has been a fulfilled life? It's nothing about success in the outside world. It's nothing about achievement in my philosophy. In my philosophy. Yeah? So this is the feelings. And for a lot of us, and especially men, it's difficult to listen to our feelings because in a lot most cultures, we uh, especially in the European culture, we are told a boy doesn't uh, cry, for instance. So it's difficult for men. But this is the point. Listen to your feelings. Uh, there, there was a beautiful uh, advertising in Spain for many years for a German car company, which was, be reasonable, follow your feelings. Be reasonable. Like yeah, which sounds like a contradiction, but that's the point. So again, to come to your question, what feelings do you want to have to say it has been a fulfilling, not successful, a fulfilling mm. life? This is the criteria. For me, as I was saying a number of times now, it is inner peace, it's inner calm, inner strength. Mm. But everyone has to find his or her own version. And... Uh... And how, how would one find that? <laughs> uh, we e I either do it with clients within 15 minutes. Because uh, they well, know. They know you mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just ask them, for instance, uh, to close their eyes or, or to relax. We do a little bit of body scan to relax. And then allow it to come up. It doesn't work all the time. I also have to admit this. And in the tough cases, uh, I'm telling them, okay, go home now. Take a hot bath, a foam bath, uh, candlelight maybe, or uh, maybe even some uh, music in the background, and allow yourself to cry. Again, difficult for men. Uh, allow yourself to cry because tears are the cleansing of the soul. And again, it might not go right away, but sooner or later, this answer will come up from inside of what is your real meaning or purpose. Because it is there. We only have to allow uh, it to come up. So... In, I would say in 80% of, of, of the, my work with clients, it comes up more or less immediately, and they say, I always knew it. Or in the other 20%, maybe take a walk in nature or take a hot, a hot bath. It will come up extremely quickly. I would like to go back a little bit, Dieter, um, on what you said earlier about emotional wounds, especially from our mm -hmm. childhood. Mm -hmm. Because it oftentimes it affects um, the beliefs that, that we have today, and some of them can be limiting. Uh, Not to only oftentimes, Ari, all the time. Well, well, I mean, 
if it well, if, if it wounds, then yes, that's what, you're right. I'm sorry, you're right. Um, mm -hmm. What happened in, in our child in our childhood? If there are wounds, then it also becomes a limiting belief. Now, uh, you mentioned earlier from your own childhood as well, um, and then you become aware of it, right? And then, from uh, your perspective as an adult, now you can see. Oh, that's actually. Uh, you can see the, the the logic that it's actually reasonable. It's okay for that to happen. It's normal. Mm. However, uh, for for you to be able to, it took like a process for 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 that to for the meaning to change, right? So, yeah. uh, to identify the wounds, what was it that happened in the past? It's one thing, but yeah. just by knowing or identifying, oh, this. This was one of it, one of the main ones. Let's say, just yeah. by identifying, it doesn't mean that suddenly, like every, it's healed now. You still need to do right. something, okay. right? So, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. how so, would, how would you help someone to actually once yeah. identify the wounds and then to to process it? Yeah. It's two steps. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the first step, and this now when I'm telling you in abstract terms, it doesn't have the real emotional impact as it has if if you do it with someone one to one so to speak so for instance okay. the process is uh he or she defines the wound he or she defines the belief he or she defines the strategy which de was developed subconsciously then i ask them to def to write down the disadvantages uh, of this strategy so for instance uh, if okay. i'm a people pleaser i'm always misused emotionally from other people uh, and so on and so on and then and this is the first of the two steps now and it's unusual i ask people what are the advantages of your core wound? What did you learn? What did you develop? What have you been able to achieve because of your core wound? Let me give you, a, again, a, a personal example. Uh, I, I had a, uh, th this core wound I was telling about my brother, and my strategy was people pleaser. I, I developed a helper syndrome. I thought I need to be good to others first before they're good to me. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. People, please. Uh, my mother had this system. Every Wednesday evening, she was inviting a circle of five friends to discuss about uh, uh, philosophy and psychology. At the age of 10, I started to help her to prepare the table, not because I was in, interested in uh, psychology and philosophy at the age, but I hoped and she was saying, oh, you're a good boy. You, I, I love you. You're nice. You're helping me. At the age of 12 or so, I started to listen in in these conversations. Again, not because I was interested, but it was nice when the adults were saying, oh, wow, only 12 years and already interested in psychology. Good boy. Good boy. At the age of 14, 15, I started to participate in these conversations. At the age of 17, 18, I had a knowledge about psychology, philosophy you would never, ever have at this age. But it was only because I wanted to get attention because I wanted to overcome my core. Mm. Mm. I had a client from Italy. Her father was a diplomat. Every three years, they had to move to a different country. She made friends in kindergarten. Next country, uh, primary school, new friends. Next country, high school, new friends. One of her core wounds was she doesn't feel rooted anywhere. But nowadays, she's speaking five languages fluently. Every coin got two sides. So what I do is, as the first of the two steps is I help people to see what are the positive sides and we don't see it as i was saying before with the with the holes in the cheese we don't see it usually and i would say two-thirds of the people start crying at this point they're saying wow i never thought about this i never thought about this and then comes the second step yeah is the question i was saying before based on this wow what is your real purpose your inner meaning in this case the answer to the mm -hmm. question and because this is frankly, this is frankly, because frankly was always saying life will be much easier if you know where to go. And if on, on a sidestep, so to speak, uh, I'm not sure if, if you know this, uh, but uh, frankly and Freud at the beginning have been working together. That was the Viennese school, Adler, oh. frankly, and, and Freud. Uh, and they separated because uh, frankly was always saying what Freud is doing in a very positive way is to help people to deal with the issues from the past. And that's necessary, uh, Frank was always saying. But it will be much easier to deal with the past if you know where you really want to go in your life. If you have your why, your what for. Uh, uh. So this is why, why this split. And this is the second step I was just saying with this question. 
first to to make them aware it's not only holes in the cheese it's also cheese and then where do you really want to go and this is like like a, a car or a plane but which is carrying them forward which makes it easy in the implementation fascinating fascinating thank you for sharing that so one is um focusing on on the past because things that needs to be um taken care of that happened in the past that it wasn't really taken care of but at the same time even though you've taken care of what happened in the past you've healed uh, it would be way much better for for, for us if you also know where you want to go exactly right. otherwise we always fall back to the old thing i mean if someone is saying uh, i want to get rid of my fear of being alone hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they always will fall back to this. They always will fall uh, unless you help them to find a positive vision, a purpose, meaning, mm -hmm. whatever label you want to put on it. Then there still is the danger, and they still might be falling back every day and when. But it will be easy to get out of the of the swamp again because they have this horse of of purpose, which is helping mm -hmm. them to get out of of, of this uh, un, uh, rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Between the outer purpose and that inner meaning. Yeah. Uh, which one do you think is more challenging to to live and stay consistent? To live? Well, I think this depends a little bit on where one is in his or her life. Uh, the, the older we get, being 69, I'm allowed to say that, the, the more the inner meaning is important and the outer stuff is less important. So like the, the attitude thing uh, will be more prevailing so to speak the younger you uh, you are we are still more in in the mainstream mindset and it will be more challenging uh to to do it uh, uh to find my way i'm sometimes saying but this doesn't work with the young generation uh to follow the uh, old frank sinatra song i did it my way yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's face it we are we're, we're still younger we're still in this in this uh, mainstream thinking, and so it will be more difficult. Uh, uh, but the old, and will be more the, uh, with the outside purpose, because we think we have to be efficient, we think we have to uh, to get recognition and, and stuff like this, and, and we have right. to, whatever uh, the, the rules we accept from the society. The older we get, the more we say, I don't care. I, I, again, if I may, I give you a personal example. I gave up, I gave up almost 100% to set myself goals. I don't set goals anymore. I used to be crazy when I was 30, 35. I had tons of Excel files. Uh, where did I make a, a, a keynote? Where did I make a speech? Where did I have a seminar? How many people were there? And, and all everything was analyzed. Uh, how do I want to improve next year? What, what, what am I going? No, I don't do it anymore. I go with the flow. As long as I'm able to be kind to myself and to the outside world, whatever comes, comes. Hmm. What what made you transition into that? Actually, it was uh, at the end of the day. To make a long story short, it was a client of mine who used to be a very famous mountain climber, and it's a story. Uh, I mean, I heard the story from him himself, but uh, it's a, it's a story which is uh, quite known actually. Maybe not from him, uh, and because he he was uh, we, when he came to me, he was almost seventy years old. He wasn't able to climb mountains anymore. And he told me, you know, ever since I'm not able to climb mountains anymore, but just to walk and then see the, 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 the mountains, I can see the flowers along the way. Oh. Yeah. So that they, we are so goal-oriented. I want to climb this mountain, and then the next mountain, and then the next mountain. We don't see the flowers here. And and sometimes I'm shocking uh, people when I, when I say this, but I, I really had some key events in uh, in my life where in in the backyard here where i'm living uh, there is an ant hill and mm -hmm. sometimes i'm just sitting there and watching the ants for whatever time it is you know completely useless you might say uh but beautiful beautiful that's life that's nature so it doesn't have to be anything big i, I, I don't need to achieve goals anymore to feel fulfillment I don't oh. need to achieve goals to uh, uh, feel fulfillment because for me, success and happiness are not what I'm after for, uh, war anymore. It is fulfillment. Oh. 
success and happiness are part of it. But you might say, yes, I agree yeah. with this. And, it's, and I don't need to achieve goals for this. So uh, not to say that the goals or the, the, the achieving something is not important, but your fulfillment it doesn't depend on it. Is that correct? Exactly, exactly, exactly. And this was a, a big, big change in my life, a wow. turning point. Yeah. And uh, uh, is it okay for me, uh, I mean, to, to ask this, and uh, if you don't mind? I believe we, we always uh, grow as a person, um, or at least we should. Uh, and uh, to grow, one of the ways that we grow is through challenges and facing challenges. Uh, because for, uh, behind every challenge that, that, that we encounter, there's always an opportunity to grow one way or another. And nowadays, in in, in your age, uh, what are your what are the main challenges or what are the, the, the main fears that, that, that you okay. still have? Okay. Uh, okay. First of all, I'm, I'm not convinced about the term growing. Uh, I'm not okay. sure that we, let, let, let me explain what I mean. Uh, yeah. I think I'm, and I'm always, well, sometimes people come and say, Dita, I have a problem. And I always interrupt them and say, you don't have a problem. You have unused potential. And then say, yeah, yeah, that's a bloody word game. I say, it's not a word game. Because if I say I have a problem, I get tense uh, because I believe I have to overcome it. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm always telling, uh, while I'm saying it's unused potential, I relax. And it's much more likely and easier mm -hmm. to do something. So I'm always saying to everyone, you are perfect the way you are. You still can develop further. You're perfect mm. the way you are. You still can, not must. You still can yeah. develop further. So, and that's what we were saying at the beginning of our conversation, if someone feels I'm fine and I'm really fine, there is no need for me neither to develop nor to grow. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Uh, okay. But if, if then it's development out of curiosity. And by the way, uh, if we have inner peace, curiosity will be much bigger. But mm. I will not depend on the result. And this comes to the second part of your question. My biggest challenge, so to speak, is I'm still in this uh, sometimes having subconscious expectations of uh, how a situation should be or how a person should react or not react. I still can't get angry, to give you a very simple example, when I'm going on the escalator in, in the uh, uh, subway and there are people in front of me and we come to the top and they stop immediately uh, and, and they don't care that someone is behind. It still makes me angry because I have the expectation that people think about others, especially about me. So <laughs> my my challenge is that uh, I'm still sometimes catching myself by uh, having uh, wrong expectations. And uh, I mean, people cannot see it now when we're talking, but to give you a, a picture, imagine a picture for this. Imagine a, a higher level of expectations and a lower level of reality. Uh -huh. the, difference, the difference is called frustration. Okay. So the question is, how can I reduce or minimize the frustration? And I have two options. I can reduce my expectations or I can re uh, change reality. Now, let me ask you, what do most people do in their lives? Uh, change, uh, uh, reduce expectations or change reality? Just think about partnerships. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. Trying to change the other person. We're trying to change a reality. It only works, in my humble opinion, if we learn to reduce expectations. And this is my major challenge uh, to uh, reduce, because I still have it every, uh, every day and when that I, I, I'm catching myself saying, come on, Dieter, take it easy. But do you think it's different when it comes expectations? Uh, because from your example, that's expectations uh, about how others should yeah. behave or should react. So it, it's uh, expectations toward hmm. uh, your externals. Uh, no, no. The thing, the thing is, the thing is, is how I react to external stuff. One of the most well, famous sentences from Viktor Frankl was, the last freedom you have in your life is how you react to a given situation. Mm. The last freedom you have is how you react to a given situation with this or similar words. So it's a trigger that someone is stopping at the escalator or so, but it's my reaction. So I, I must not 
uh, be hung up by them being angry about this person or getting aggressive uh -huh. even. Uh -huh. I have to reflect and say, hey, hey, Dieter, come on, take it easy. Uh, why why does it trigger you? And, and I know why it triggers me because it's, again, from childhood, but uh, it's a trigger. And this is what's happening so often. A lot of people take things too personal. Uh, for, uh -huh. uh, what, and and what I also learned is I'm a big fan, you might say, of the old Stoic philosophy, the old Greek Stoic philosophy. Uh, and 80-90% of the things, especially the ones outside, we cannot influence. And this is one of the problems with goal setting. I mean, there might be a war all of a sudden, there might be an, an, uh, a volcano eruption like in Indonesia right now, I believe. Uh, uh, there, there might be what, an, uh, COVID or whatever. I cannot influence to achieve the goals. I can. So the only thing I can influence, I can develop further, is myself. And here it starts. I get a trigger. I sit in the evening. I reflect. Why did I get triggered? I laugh about myself and I say, okay, next time maybe you will not react like this. Peter, is there any, um, besides uh, Victor Frankl's uh, books, of course, is there any books that, that, uh, that you recommend, like books that, that have a, like a significant impact or like important insights for you yeah uh there is one book which really also influenced me in a very positive way which is called uh tuesdays with maury uh, tuesdays with maury yeah yeah yeah, yeah you, you know it you've heard about it yeah i, I read uh, that yeah. yeah it's a beautiful book yeah, yeah okay it absolutely is and it's a true story actually it's a true yeah. story <clears throat> Uh, mm -hmm. I would suggest to read the book and not to watch the movie because they made a movie out of it afterwards as well. But as always, the movies uh, are shorter and more superficial. So okay. this very much uh, mm -hmm. uh, influenced, influenced me. Yeah. And then everything about stoicism uh, mm -hmm. as well. I'm, if, if people want to categorize me, I'm always saying I'm a mixture of, of Taoist and Buddhist thoughts. I'm not a, a Buddhist or a Taoist myself, but I like the Taoist philosophy. Uh, mm -hmm. going with the flow, like the water doesn't have, uh, I mean, the water goes to the ocean anyway. Yeah. Uh, but it, it doesn't uh, say, I want to go left, I want to go right. It goes with the flow. So, uh, I like this philosophy. So, everything about, in terms of books, about, uh, and also because I was giving the example about the, the wave and the ocean, uh, I'm, I'm very much both into non duality as well as into quantum mechanics. I, as I was saying before, my mother was philosophy, but uh, she was studying physics and my father as well. So uh, at, the, uh, at an early age, I was confronted with physics and uh, later on with quantum mechanics. And so, so how real is reality, for instance? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. and again, there, there's this other uh, Austrian Fritsch of Capra who in the 70s, and that's another book, by the way, uh, uh, who wrote a book called The Tao of Physics. Uh, and he's a professor of uh, of uh, physics at Berkeley, California. So he's not uh, uh, necessarily a spiritual. Well, he is, but not a philosopher. Uh, and and he was writing in this book, the Tao of Physics. Nowadays, in physics, we come to the same conclusion as the Buddhists had two thousand five hundred years ago, which is how real is reality? Yeah. Uh, mm. And and in quantum mechanics, they are saying in a way we are creating reality ourselves, and it's it's. It's our imagination. There's no proof that it's not a matrix or it's a, it's a movie or whatever. Yeah. So, long story short, short this book's uh, about uh, Tuesday with Maury uh, and then the Tao of Physics. Was I saying another one? Yeah, and books in general about Stoicism and, and Taoism. Uh, I, I, I always find it like uh, when I started to learn um, quantum physics, I cannot help to think and to relate it with philosophy Absolutely. And I, 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 because it's for me it's very much connected I, 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 if more than this in the 50s last century when my parents were studying physics physics was a, a sub department of the, the faculty of philosophy really yeah, and this was the case last century, uh, up to the second half of, of the of the century in all countries in Europe, that physics, chemists, chemistry, and all these things were sub uh, compartments of the faculty of philosophy. My both my parents had a uh, PhD in philosophy. 
I did not know that. And that is yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. Because because the thing was the philosophers have always been here on this planet, yeah. But then mm. uh, in the in the seventeenth, eighteenth century, approximately, they started to try to prove certain things, uh, and only then. Uh, physics became an uh, accepted or, or recognized uh, part of philosophy. Later on, the philosophers said, "No more with this uh, with these guys." So they separated, so to speak. But it was coming from philosophy. Now that you've explained it that way, it makes so much sense because mm -hmm. it's about proving the the, the the philosophy itself. What what they're yeah, yeah. And now it's maybe coming back. Now it's maybe coming oh. back because now in physics, at least, or in quantum mechanics, as you were saying, they're saying, "Hang on, uh, what is what is the field of probability? What is consciousness?" Uh, and, yeah. and all of this uh, the, the, coming back to the roots, so to speak. Hmm. The challenge here is the challenge here is Ari, that with our limited uh, mind, so to speak, with our logic-oriented mind, it's difficult to prove anything which is philosophical. I mean, even quantum mechanics uh, is... The, the example I'm always giving is uh, in, in, in Brussels, in Belgium, you have this big model of an uh, atom, okay, with this... Uh -huh. uh, uh, and since 100 years, we know it doesn't look like this, but we're still teaching in school uh, that an, an atom looks like this, like it is the model in, 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 in Brussels. It's so difficult for a long story short, with other words, maybe, and this is the reason why I'm interested in, in these areas, maybe we are at the same stage as some four or 500 years ago until when people were thinking the earth is flat and realize the earth is round. Maybe we are on the same uh, area now, same situation that we're saying, okay, maybe it's not just our mind and it's not just our limited logic. Maybe there is something oceanic, to use my, my picture. Yeah. Ah. Thank you so much. But if you don't mind, I have one more question I want to, I want to ask you. Uh, Sure, and sure. I, always, I always ask this to every guest as well. Okay. I've been asking you some questions um, and I've been gaining so much uh, knowledge, insights, and I thank you so much for that. But is there any question that you think uh, I should have asked, but I haven't asked yet? Do you think it's uh, like an important thing for you to share as well, but I haven't asked it? <laughs> uh, well, maybe it's a, a, not only a question you should have asked, but also a question which I could have asked back to you, which is, what is what is your takeaway from our conversation? And it doesn't have to be something new. Don't get me wrong. It's maybe a confirmation of something you have known. But what is your takeaway from our conversation? Okay. Interesting. I've never been asked before. In, in, in yeah, yeah. No, that's the that's the point. That's the point. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the, the facility usually is is asking questions and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also interesting because I'm also say, always saying I'm learning as well uh, in, yeah. in such kind of conversation. So it's, it would be interesting for me. What's your takeaway? Okay. One to to take from the the very last part of your explanation, like when you said that science or physics uh, chemistry used to be under under faculty of philosophy, philosophy. for me it, it it confirms again one of the things that i've heard i forgot who said it but in this universe or there is no like separate knowledge actually everything is like like it's human being like we are the one who who segregated this like saying that this is math, this is chemistry, this is economy, but yeah. in in actuality, it's uh, it's just the knowledge about life in the universe. So, exactly. uh, so that it, it, it reminds me and it, it, it confirms me about how things can um, how things not just can, but how things are connected. But it's just how we view things. That makes it that can make it seem like it, they're separated. Exactly, exactly. Well, um, that's yeah. definitely one of the main takeaways because the, the the one that is closest from what you just explained to me, but yeah. also about uh, the the inner meaning and the outer purpose. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's also very very insightful as well, and how how can uh, how to how can we identify 
uh, that emotional wound, especially all the way, all the way from, from our childhood. And, and like you said, most of them, if not all has something to do with our childhood Absolutely. and, and not just to identify, but to do something about that afterwards. The question that, that you asked to how to, to process this, to actually utilize this as well. So th- these are really, really like uh, important things that uh, personally, I, again, I thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, so personally, it, it really helped me. It made me think, it made me reflect. And like you said, you cannot just try to find the time, but you need to take the time to make the time to reflect. I personally have uh, experienced how beneficial it is to 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 regularly make the time to to, to reflect it, it makes me Good. it gets me to, to to know myself more and as a person we are always evolving so it's important to always reflect me so we always know uh, like our latest version of way so uh yeah, yeah that that's Good. at least several out of so many things yeah. yeah. excellent glad to hear glad to hear great great well, uh, <laughs> i bet uh, but I still have that question for you, though. Is there anything that, that I should ask that, that, that things that you think is important to share, but but you haven't shared because maybe I haven't asked it yet? No, frankly, I, I really think we you, your questions were quite holistic, covering everything, which uh, I consider uh, important. Well, in, no. in, in, in that well, case, it's uh, really the curiosity I, of, of for me. It was really the curiosity of of uh, what is your takeaway. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, in, in that case, let me ask another question then. Uh, if you have <laughs> okay. I said it's the last one, but since the, you said yeah. you have the very one. last, the very last one now. Yeah. <laughs> the, the last, last. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so, if you think of what would like, what's your final message for someone who who wants to? Um, wants to find their purpose uh, and, and and to live a, a meaningful and fulfilling life and really I don't know what I don't know where to start okay what would, what would be your suggestion in in Greece in, in uh, the Oracle of Delphi at the entrance there is this uh, sentence know yourself mm. know thyself this is what is really missing in our society is, as I was saying at the beginning, we learn about the outside stuff, but we don't learn about the inside stuff. Uh, learn, learn about yourself and do it under the following motto. You are more than you think under a following, the following motto or mantra mm-hmm. headline. And the, the mantra, the headline is you are more than you think you are. Get to know yourself better. Because you are more than you think you are. But the important thing is get to know yourself. Not just the capitals of the world. Get to know your beautiful, positive feelings. And as a result, learn to love yourself more. Because you are more than you think you are. Dieter, thank you so very, very much for sharing that. That's beautiful. And, uh, and it, it really warms my heart uh, listening to you. Thank you. My I, pleasure. I really, really thank you very much for having me. Uh, my, my my pleasure and my honor uh, to, to have you here. And I'm very sure everyone who's listening uh, is feeling the same, and I believe that they do. And again, thank you for taking your time. I'm very, very grateful that, that you finally find this time to 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 have this conversation. And I hope this won't be lo- the last time I, as, as well. <laughs> I sure hope not. It would be a real pleasure if we can stay in touch one way or the other, Ali. Definitely. Likewise. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Take care. And thank for you. everyone who, who's, who's watching, who's listening as well, um, I hope you, you, you don't just listen, but you really like what Dieter asked me as so, well. You make sure you get your takeaways as well and you utilize whatever it is that you learn from from this conversation um and with that i thank you as well for listening for watching this and see you in the next episode take care everyone Hello.